Everyone, what's up and welcome back to another video here on Mana Sports Talk. We're going to be jumping into my week 14 power rankings. You know, we've come so far in the season. The season just continued to go on and on. It's just been incredible. We've gone through COVID and everything, but we're getting through this. We had some great games this week, you know, to see, you know, the Jets and Raiders surprisingly coming down to the last minute. Uh, Rams looking good once again. The Seahawks surprisingly losing to the Giants. We had the Texans losing on a bad snap. You know, all kinds of stuff. The Chiefs not looking too good on Sunday night. Um, but yeah, it was really great. And Washington beating Pittsburgh. We got a lot to break down here. Let's get into my power rankings. And then we'll be doing my picks. So the Chiefs are still number one. And they've got solidified at the number one position because of the Steelers losing to the Washington football team. But... Uh, the Chiefs, you know, really didn't put up, you know, those performances that we're accustomed to watching from them, you know, putting up 35 points a game, you know, and all that stuff. But they were still able to get it done. You know, the Broncos defense was actually very good. They were able to stop them in the red zone like all the time. And um, the Chiefs are 3 out of 10 on third down. So you're not going to score a lot of points if you do that. And the Chiefs only scored, you know, they scored much less than they normally do. 22 points and five field goals and this was actually a very interesting play Tyreek Hill thought he didn't catch it but then you look here it never touched the ground and he actually caught it and if the Chiefs had challenged it they would have won it and you would have added seven more points onto the Chiefs score it would have been 29 and it would be another touchdown for Mahomes but Mahomes had some pretty solid numbers he had 318 yards and one touchdown and he had an 82 QBR. Um, and they were much less in the time of possession. And that's what the teams want to do when they try and beat the Chiefs. But, you know, it was, you can't hold them for too long. And the Broncos were not able to do that. And, yeah, the Chiefs were able to roll on 11-1. and one. The Chiefs defense wasn't really too good. You know, we had a couple of touchdowns here by the Broncos. They had some chances at turnovers. They got two interceptions. But um, the defense did okay. But, once again, the offense did not perform as what we thought. Mahomes still had a relatively good game. You know, we are accustomed to him scoring, like, so many points at 400, 400 yards, but it just can't happen all the time. So, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I trust Andy Reid. I think they'll get better in their red zone offense. They should be fine with Pat. You just don't have to worry about them. I never worry about the Chiefs now. So now, of course, we're going to be talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers, whose undefeated season hopes just came to a crashing and um, embarrassing end, honestly. Ooh. But, you know, the Steelers' defense, you know, unfortunately, they're getting a lot of injuries. Um, they're not the same. You know, they lost Joe Hayden, who had some sort of injury. Um, you know, Bud Dupree, you know, some of their linebackers, you don't know. But again, the Steelers' defense is still very good, but... Alex Smith, you know, he was incredible. He was able to dice up the Steelers' defense, you know, especially in the second half. But for the Steelers, you know, they're just not looking dangerous. I just don't think any team is really scared of going to play them in January. Because they're like, the Steelers can't even run the ball. Yeah, they'll get James Conner back, but, you know, how much will it really improve? We don't know. Until they can run the ball effectively, nobody's really going to get scared of the uh, Steelers. The Steelers' wide receivers... They just keep dropping so many catches, like this one, Deontay Johnson. Um, you know, they're just dropping too many passes, and Big Ben cannot be throwing it like 50 times every game. You're not going to win in the playoffs by doing that. Teams are going to know what you're doing. The Steelers need to figure out their identity on offense, run the ball a little bit more, not that you're going to have James Conner back, and uh, defensively just tighten up and get back to what you were doing before, honestly. Um... Hopefully, you know, the Steelers' defense has a good depth. Hopefully, they can step up and deliver. Um, but I'm a little bit worried about that offensive side of the ball. The Steelers have not been looking good the past couple of weeks. Um, they need to get back to it. You know, I was thinking of putting the Saints at two. You know, in my mind, the Saints are at two. But, you know, I just want to wait and see if Drew Brees will be, you know, coming back. You know, and if he looks good when he's coming back, Drew Brees. I just want to make sure that Drew Brees is good enough when he comes back. He should be fine. So I, I think the Saints will be good. And uh, Washington had some really big drives in the fourth quarter. Alex Smith was able to keep the plays alive. 
Logan Thomas, J.D. McKissick were very important, and their kicker, Dustin Hopkins. Lots of clutch kicks there, and uh, the defense, most importantly, they were able to stop uh, the Steelers on the last drive getting a tipped interception, and that ended it. Amazing, by, amazing job by Washington to end the Steelers' undefeated season, but, you know, the Steelers are going to have a tough task the next couple of weeks. Saints, there really, really isn't much to talk about here for the Saints. I've already mentioned everything, but that Saints defense is just really, really good. And this could be the year for the Saints. I know it's been their year for the past two years with unfortunate injuries. Not injuries, unfortunate losses in the playoffs. But uh, this year, their defense is one of the best in the league. I think they've been the best defense the past couple of weeks. So the Saints defense, really great. Malcolm Jenkins, tremendous help. They're getting pressure with Cam Jordan. Their secondary is holding up. And, uh, you know... It's the quarterback situation with Taysom Hill, but Taysom's doing a tremendous job in there. Sean Payton, you have to give him credit. He's using Taysom Hill's skills and everything that Taysom Hill needs to be to be successful offensively. Um, you know, Sean Payton's using those skill sets, and it's really helping. This week, they got back to using Alvin Kamara. I'm sure they need to do that every game. Um, and yeah, when they get Drew Brees back, this was just a wide-open touchdown to Traquan Smith. Can't get easier for... Taysom Hill's first ever touchdown pass, you know, finally got his first touchdown pass, but that was a very easy one. But really, their defense is playing great, they're doing great things on offense, and they will be looking to, you know, win the Super Bowl this year. The Packers, they look great on offense as usual, they're one of the best offenses in the league, Aaron Rodgers had such a great day, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he threw for 295 yards and three touchdowns, two to Devontae Adams, who had a very nice game, 121 yards and two touchdowns on 10 receptions. Devontae Adams is, you know, one of the best wide receivers in the league right now, if not the best. Uh, um, and that Packer offense is looking very, very scary for anybody right now. Defensively, the Packers were okay. It's the Eagles, nothing to really worry about. You know, it was a little bit of a scare at the end, but because of Jalen Hurts coming in, Jalen Hurts is looking extremely good. They need to give Jalen Hurts more opportunities for the Eagles. He had a late touchdown pass on 4th and 18, which was very nice. And then he had, um, there was a kickoff return, punt return for a touchdown that made the game a little bit interesting late. But honestly, it was already over, you know, and Aaron Jones finished it up with a nice big run all the way to the house. Aaron Jones ended up with 130 yards and one touchdown. Rodgers had a very great passer rating in this game, you know. He's had the second best passer rating overall this year according to 538 um and you know Rodgers is just continuing to really have a really great mvp season this year and the packers offense is what's going to lead them you know far in the playoffs bill is at number five you know I've, i'm thinking very highly of the bills with josh allen who threw over 375 yards and four touchdowns a career night on monday night football in front of a national tv audience he has been amazing and Allen this year's been the fourth best QBR behind Mahomes, Rodgers, you know, and Deshaun. So, you know, Josh Allen has been playing really well. He's gone past all we've had in the expectations for him this year. To me, he's looking like an MVP candidate. Some people are not talking about him enough. He is extremely good. There's a lot of similarities with him and Mahomes, something that you need to look out with him throwing on the run, extending plays and stuff like that. And Bills defensively, you know, I think they'll get better as the season goes on. You know, they have a pretty good secondary, I think. They just need to get a little bit more pressure, I feel, sometimes. But, you know, they're a very great team, and they're really taking a tremendous leap in progress this year. Can't wait to see. Rams, they're looking really good. 8-4, and four, you know, they're about to pretty much, I think, win the division. I don't think they're going to lose the division. Their defense is, according to me, the best in the NFL, the best passer rating very stingy i've been saying that over and over but they are very very good and when jared goff jared goff is the key when he is good not turning the ball over and they're running the ball well and doing play action these rams are going to be one of the hardest teams to beat and every team should be scared of facing these guys because of their lockdown defense and you're hoping for, uh, if a ram if you're a rams fan that jared goff can perform you know in the playoffs consistently he needs to be more consistent and whether or not the offense can perform or not is the key to the um, 
Ram success as they get a sack there by another, none other than the best defensive player in the league, Aaron Donald. Um, you know, they're going to be looking very good, looking to take control of the division. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup have been extremely good. And um, their defense had a pick six, a fumble recovery, limited Kyler Murray to 170 yards. That's it. Um, Murray had a pretty bad passer rating. Murray, you know, struggled. He had a 45 QBR, which is just terrible. And Goff was good. He had a 351 yards, one touchdown, and he had an 87 QBR, which was one of the highest of the week. So, great job there by Jared Goff. And for the Seahawks, you know, number seven, you know, they just have a tendency to, like, play down to these opponents, like the Giants and stuff. I don't know why, but they always find it hard to beat these teams that they should really beat easily. Um, it's just a problem I see every year. And, um, you know, Pete Carroll and them, they really need to get it together and beat these teams that they need to easily beat. Um, I know the Giants have been playing really great. Their defense has been great, you know, and they're doing good things on the offensive rushing game. But, um, you know, the Seahawks really need to play to their opponents and actually play to their to their potential. You know, overall, they're, they're a great team. They have a chance this year, a good chance, and they need to live up to it. About those Browns, I mean... Those Browns are looking really good. Their first non-losing season in a long time, you know, since 2007 or something like that. It's been a long time. You know, 2003 was their last time they had a winning record or something like that. It's just been a tough stretch for Browns fans. They finally have a winning team, a team that can do some damage in the playoffs with one of the, the best running games, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. And you know, it all comes down to Baker Mayfield. He had, I think, the best quarterback performance of the week. You know, throwing for 334 yards, four touchdowns. The Browns were 10 out of 16 on third down. And Baker had an 88 QBR, the highest of the week. Um, and those Browns really put up some points, 41 points. They just could not be stopped offensively. The Titans had no answers. And Baker was looking so great. He is really good on play action. His fakes are incredible. If you saw that touchdown to Donovan Peoples-Jones, that was really good. And then, um, you know, he's had some other touchdowns which are just really incredible on the play-action side. He had that touchdown to the offensive lineman, Kendall Lamb, which is just hilarious to see. And Baker's really enjoying his game right now. He's really enjoying to play with uh, his teammates. It's really fun to watch. These brands are no joke. You need to take them seriously. They can make some, some noise with their... You know, strong defense that can get to the quarterback and a great rushing offense. Look out. These Browns are good. You have a chance to respond here. First and 10 at the 25. Good play action. Here's Mayfield throwing deep. Peoples Jones is open. And he has got it for the touchdown Cleveland. Donovan Peoples Jones, 75 yards in a play. Cleveland. Dancing its way to 24 nothing. I, I really don't know what happened to the Titans. I was not expecting them to get beat up like this 38-7 to at one point. I know it ended up 41-35, but these Titans just did not perform at all. <coughs> um, Derrick Henry only had 60 yards rushing. He lost a fumble. Ryan Tannehill was great. Tannehill had 389 yards, 3 touchdowns, 1 pick, and 82 QBR. Um, but the ten Titans were trailing big, so they had to rally on Tannehill. It was kind of garbage time. The Browns were giving up yards and stuff like that. So it's empty calories, you know, honestly. But, you know, what happened to Derrick Henry? I know he lost a fumble. It's been a long time since he lost the ball. But what has happened to Derrick Henry in this game? He only had 60 yards. I don't know why the Titans didn't stick with him longer. I know they were down. But you have to stick with what's your strength. And that's Derrick Henry. And then the play action off of it. Um, you know, their offense didn't really do much you know the cleveland defense was consistently holding them down and they weren't able to run it effectively with derrick henry enough you know as you see this the browns just getting to him and derrick henry lost the ball there and uh you know just a bad performance just a bad day for them i think they'll rebound because they're a good team tampa bay buccaneers they had a bye this week but they move up only because of other teams moving down like the colts Coming in at number 11, they move up a little bit this week in my power rankings. I was surprised that their rush defense did not look too good. They gave quite a bit of yards up to Ezekiel Elliott, you know, and that Cowboys offense was moving up and down the field. It was just the fact that their kicker missed three field goals, which is just terrible, honestly. But 
Lamar Jackson, after recovering from COVID, has looked really good. This game, he was incredible. You know, um, he had 94 rushing yards and a big touchdown on fourth and two, as, as elusive as ever. And, uh, you know, he's looking really good. 107 yards, two touchdowns, you know. You know, I saw a couple of errant throws from him as that's intercepted. You know, he just needs to get, be a better passer. He needs to deliver with more accuracy. It seemed like Troy Aikman last night was hinting out some fundamentals about Lamar Jackson's passing. You know, he needs to fix that. It can't always be the run game like we saw in the playoffs. You can't always rely on that. Lamar Jackson has to have the ability to deliver accurate balls all the time. You know, he's got a great running backs, you know, J.K. Dobbins, Ingram, Edwards, and he can run it too on fourth and two, like we saw, you know, but, you know, the Ravens, I think they might make the playoffs, they might sneak in, if you take a look at their um, chance to make the playoffs, they have a 59% chance to make the playoffs, according to 538, as you see that walk-in, wide-open touchdown there by Lamar, because uh, they have a, such an easy schedule, they're facing so many easy teams that... The only team that they could possibly lose to would be the Browns that they play on Monday night. So, and by the way, those Browns have a 91% chance to make the playoffs. So that's something. Um, you know, I'm excited. I only don't really think much of this Colts team. You know, defensively, they've not looked great. Even with the force Buckner could make, Deshaun Watson really lighted them up in this game. And the Colts, really, to me, in my mind, they lost this game. You know, it was just a bad snap by the center, Nick Martin that the Colts got extremely lucky and were able to sneak away with the win because the Texans really deserved it. Deshaun Watson by far deserved that win. The Colts did not. They did not play as good, I think, as Deshaun Watson did. You know, Deshaun was playing with these practice squad players like Chad Hansen, and he led them on that game-winning drive. And unfortunately, the center just had a bad snap. Um, they were, the Texans were going to win this game. Their defense does not look great. I don't trust Phillip Rivers at this time. I know T.Y. Hilton has been pretty good. In this game, he was great. But, um, you know, I just don't really think much of this Colts team that much. Their defense just hasn't performed right now. And uh, we'll just have to see. They're not going to win the division. They might sneak into the playoffs. Currently, they have a 69% chance to make the playoffs. So they might do it. Phillip Rivers had 280 yards and two touchdowns. And T.Y. Hilton, once again, who the Texans just cannot stop every single time. T.Y. Hilton just managed to cook the Texans for 110 yards and a touchdown on eight catches. So, anyway, um, we'll see about the Colts, but they just need to get better defensively and uh, need to be more consistent offensively. So the Dolphins, they just continued to move higher and higher in my rankings. They're number 13. They're 8-4. and four. They're a very well-coached team. But the thing is, they have a great secondary, great defense in general. The thing is that they have a very tough schedule up ahead, and uh, I'm not sure if they can do anything about it because they have the Bills, and then they have the Chiefs, you know, so it's a bit tough. I don't know if they'll be able to make the playoffs, honestly, because of this tough schedule. But we'll see. These Dolphins have been magical. Staying in the same spot as last week, they escaped New York with a miracle win over the Jets. The, the Jets, you know, giving the game to them by sending so many people to rush their car. And Derek Hart throws a perfect pass to Henry Ruggs. Um, but the Raiders with Darren Waller having over 200, 200 yards receiving was incredible. And he led them to victory here. And, um, you know, it's it's pretty impressive to see Darren Waller perform on this level. Um, and Derek Carr had a decent game, not too amazing. But, you know, the Raiders were lucky to escape there with a victory. Things they barely beat the Jaguars. It shouldn't have come down to that. I just don't think the Vikings are playoff caliber this year. You know, they're just not good enough on the defensive end. And if you stop Dalvin Cook, you basically stop the Vikings offense. Um, they haven't been as great. You know, they're not putting up such great numbers. And the fact that they went, it took the overtime to beat the Jaguars just says it. But what I really like about the Vikings is that man, Justin Jefferson. He is something amazing. He's on my fantasy team. No wonder I love him so much. But he is just great. One of the best rookie receivers I've ever seen before. By that crazy touch on by Jacksonville as you take a look at that. But, um, you know, I'm not really sure about these Vikings making the playoffs, though. Patriots finally made it into my power rankings after uh, 14, I mean 13 weeks at number 16. Um, about time. It's taken a while, but they've done it. 
after a 45 to nothing blowout destruction of the Los Angeles Chargers, they're up there. But the thing is, the math is just very hard for the Patriots to make the playoffs. They can make a run, they can go 10 and 6. But I'm just not really sure if they can make the playoffs. They have a tough schedule as well. It's just not looking too good. I know they're playing good. I just don't think they'll make the playoffs. It's looking a bit kind of difficult. But, you know, they're playing well. Cam is playing well. And look out for an upset on Thursday night. So here are the Raiders at 35 seconds up. Carr over the middle finds Waller once again. The clock is running. They better hurry. They need to spike it right now. They're taking their time. Only 13 seconds left. Third and 10. This may be the last chance for the Raiders. Blitz coming. Carr throws it. High. Got rugs. And he caught it. Las Vegas Raiders. They may have just done the impossible. Don't know what the Jets were doing. Leaving Henry Ruggs one-on-one. -on -one. Incredible. 46 yards for the win. Let's take a deeper dive into this. You see it's one-on-one -on -one because the Jets sent everybody stop and go. It's a little stop and then he goes. And it's a speedster, Henry Ruggs, who you just cannot guard because of his speed. It's just unfortunate because of this. And the Jets have to fire their defensive coordinator, Greg Williams. You know, I feel like they might be doing this on purpose to get Trevor Lawrence in the draft. I feel like they might have done this on purpose, but you never know with the Jets. Um, it was just sad to see. Um, but you saw that stop and go by Henry Ruggs is really what got it done. That stop and go, he stops. It's then you jump on the route because the corner's not too experienced, and then you go. So then you just burned him, and that was it. His record so far has been pretty good. I think 106, correct, 41 right. I mean, 41 wrong and one tie. And in week 13, I went 10 and 5. Not one of my best weeks because there are a couple of upsets here, but whatever. Tampa Bay Bucks taking on the Minnesota Vikings, the 6 and 6 Vikings, and the 7 and 5 Buccaneers Sunday at 12 o'clock on Fox at Tampa. Um, I think this might be a really interesting game. I think it might be high scoring. The Vikings def often, I mean, def what am I saying? The Vikings defense is just not good. I think Tom Brady should take advantage of it. I think the Buccaneers, after the bye, got their act together. The Vikings offensively should be great passing-wise, but with no Dalvin Cook, it won't be enough as the Buccaneers take this 37-31. to 31. On Fox at New York, the Arizona Cardinals 6-6 six six, taking on the Giants 5-7. The Giants in the lead in the NFC East. The Cardinals in third place in the NFC West. Um should be a good game the giants are much better than we thought they were before that's why it's going to be a better game the giants defense is um very good and it should be interesting to see against kyler murray and deandre hopkins how they fare i think the cardinals you know after a couple of losses in a row they're going to get their act together this time offensively they might they may not be their best deandre hopkins should have a good game kyler may be able to run the ball this week and defensively, I think the Cardinals do a much better job. They're desperate for a win, and they get it here. The Giants with Colt McCoy is just not going to get it done two weeks in a row. Five on CBS at Las Vegas. The Raiders, 7-5, and five, escaping from New York with a win. Taking on the Colts, escaping from Texas with a win, 8-4. and four. I think there should be a great game in the evening slot, but I think the Raiders, you know, even though they took so long, to, it took such a difficult miracle to beat the Jets, I think that sparked something in the Raiders. I feel like they're going to perform this week. Their offense is going to be good. The uh, Colts defense has not been too good. Um, and uh, here's my prediction. Raiders 30, Colts 28. I think the Raiders defense, you know, plays a little bit better in this game. They'll force a couple of turnovers on Phillip Rivers. And the Raiders offensively put up a really good performance for a very, very long time. Sunday night football, 720 on NBC at Buffalo. Buffalo in prime time once again, back-to-back -back weeks, taking on the 11-1 Steelers. Um, I think this should be a really, really good game. Really interesting to see how the Steelers' defense will be able to stop Josh Allen, who's, to me, playing at an MVP level. I'm just not sure it's going to happen this week. The Steelers' defense has lost a couple of pieces, you know, in their linebacker, core, and uh, cornerback. I'm just not sure how they're going to perform. I think offensively, the Steelers are going to be much better this week. But defensively, I'm just not sure. And Josh Allen's looking too good, honestly. Bills 31, Steelers 30. Very close game, very close finish. But I think Josh Allen gets it done. 
and the Bills defense holds on at the end um, in the thrilling Sunday night game. Browns and AFC North rivalry matchup. The Browns 9-3 and three, taking on the Ravens 7-5. and five. Ravens coming off a nice win on Monday against the Cowboys. The Browns beating up the Titans the heck out of them on Sunday. Should be a great game. The matchup is going to be the Browns rushing game versus the Ravens defense. Last week, Ezekiel Elliott destroyed the Ravens rushing defense a little bit. I think Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt may put a little bit more on that, but the Ravens will get some of their players back. I think the Browns get 100 yards rushing, but not too much higher than that. I think Baker Mayfield has another pretty good game off play action. Um, like you saw the Cowboys move the ball down the field. I think the Browns will be able to do that with a good mix of play action. And I think the Browns defense with Miles Garrett, they might be able to get Lamar Jackson. Um, Lamar may have a couple of bad throws here and there. Maybe be able to sack him. And I think the Browns actually get another victory here. Browns 26, Ravens 23. I think the Browns win it close game, but... Um, I think the Browns defense is able to get to Lamar a couple of times late, maybe force a fumble or something like that. And I think the Browns go to 10 wins now. Very impressive. So thanks for watching. Hope you made it this far. If you did, please go down, hit the like button to support my channel. I really appreciate it when you go down and hit the like button. And also be sure to subscribe to my channel. Go down, hit the subscribe button and enable notifications to get updates for any of my new videos, such as power rankings and predictions that come out weekly. And the NBA will be coming out in a couple of weeks. We'll be getting out an NBA uh, season preview, as well as the Rockets specifically season preview. So please subscribe for that. And I hope to see you in the next video.